Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this MSI motherboard. It's designed for the new Threadripper third generation. It's called the TRX40 Pro Wi-Fi. It's got quad channel support, it's got quad SSD support, and when I say quad SSD, it's Gen 4 NVMe, so that means ultra fast SSDs. So it sounds pretty good. Market price for this is roughly about £430. We do have links to this product in our description. Okay, so this motherboard is a STRX4 motherboard, so it will work with the new 3rd gen Threadripper CPUs, but it will only work with the 3rd gen Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. You cannot put 1st or 2nd gen in there. It will not be compatible, even though it physically fits, it will not fit in, uh, it will not physically work. The chipset is an AMD TRX40 chipset, hence the name. It supports memory from 2133 MHz up to 3200 MHz by standard, but you can overclock the memory from 2666 MHz all the way up to 4666 via AXMP overclock mode. The memory has to be quad channel so that means you need to put four sticks of memory in there for it to work properly. It has a total of eight slots for memory so ideally you want to be putting four sticks of memory in or eight sticks of memory in. Maximum memory total is 256 gigabytes. You have got four PCI Express 16 lanes you've all, which are also uh, Gen 4. You've got one PCI Express one times. You've got eight SATA 3 ports. You've got two M.2 slots. You've got RAID capacity of 0, 1 and 10. The LAN is two Intel i2-1180s. USB 3.2 on the front. It's got one Gen 2 type C and four Gen 1 type A's. USB 3.2 ports on the rear, it's got one Gen 2 times 2 type C and three Gen 2 type A and four Gen 1 type A. And total USB 2.0 ports on the front, it supports four. It's got standard audio ports on the back for a Realtek ALC 1220 Kodak. The form factor is ATX so it is not an extended board. This is a standard ATX so you'll fit it in most ATX cases no problem. It supports SLI, freeway SLI, Crossfire and it has support for Windows 10 64-bit only. Okay let's have a look at this box for this MSI TRX40 Pro Wi-Fi. The box art is pretty plain to be honest. It just basically tells you what it's what it is. A few little cross lining marks on there, doesn't really look that impressive, uh, but it's pretty much a standard black box with telling you what it is on there. It tells you about it being AMD Ryzen Threadripper, uh, AMD Socket STRX4, again STRX4, if you notice the X in it means that it's for the third generation of Threadripper, um, so it will not support your standard Threadripper. Uh, CPU, so your generation 1 or 2. Uh, TRX40, it's got quad PCI Express 4.0, you've got quad channel DDR4 memory and Nvidia SLI ready. It doesn't mention Crossfire on there, it doesn't mention it as three way SLI, it supports either. So have a look at the rest of the box, the sides are pretty standard, pretty much tells you the same stuff you get again. On the back of the box, You've got a bit of information here, so it says it's the Pro Series, you've got your NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire technology the stickers there. You've also got information about the dual LAN plus Wi-Fi 6 on there, Lightning USB 20G, extended heatsink, you've got Core Boost, so enhanced performance, you've got uh, a frozen heatsink design, and up to four times lightning gen for M.2s. It looks like they include a extra card with it which you can plug into on your PC Express ports uh, which will actually give you room to add two more M.2s um, so 
this an expander. It doesn't say optional, so I'm guessing that is in there. It also shows you a picture of the back of the I.O. plate, so you can see all the USB ports, Wi-Fi, LAN, audio. And it's also got a clear CMOS button there as well, and flash BIOS button on there as well. It gives you a bit more specifications there as well, but otherwise, pretty much straightforward. Let's open this up. There's no seals on the box. So first thing we come across, ah yeah, that's the, looks like it's gonna be the PCI Express Gen 4 Expander. Yes it is, and it's got a nice fan on there. It's quite heavy actually, so uh, it's definitely not cheap. So that should be ideal for putting your PCI Express cards in if you've got plenty, and again it'll support Gen 4. Uh, then you've got your motherboard here. We'll have a little bit more look closer at that in a few seconds. Let's see what else is inside the box. You can actually see where the CPU is more at the bottom of the box there. Could have done with a nice pad there to help protect it. Okay, inside the box, first thing we've got here, it looks like RGB cables. You've got an I.O. plate there. You've got two SATA leads there as well, one with a right angle on it. You've also got here, looks like more RGB connections there, and even more RGB, and then you've got your Wi-Fi connection there as well. Inside the compartment, oh, that one's empty, there we go. You've got, thanks for buying MSI, it's basically your product term, warranty information about the looks of it, registering it and so forth. You've got an MSI shield, you can stick on whatever you want. You've got some cable tie stickers, so you basically write on them what they are and tie it around the sticker, so you could say this is going to hard drive one, hard drive two and so forth, really up to you. You've got DVD for drivers and stuff, not that anyone really uses the DVDs these days, it would be nice for them to include them on a USB pen. Um, especially when you're spending that sort of money on one of these boards, because as I said they're over £400. Looks like you've got three little screws, those I'm guessing are going to be for screwing in the M.2s. I'm not sure why three, because there's two on the board, two on the PCI Express expander, that's four to me. I'm not sure exactly why there's only three, but we'll see. Uh, you've got manual and case standoff warning here by the looks of it. So yeah, it's basically making sure, say, sure that you do not have any standoffs on your case in these positions on the board. It looks like they'll be marked on the back of the motherboard. And then you've got a quick installation guide which shows you roughly how to install the CPU um, on there. Actually, this one tells you how to install the Intel 20XX CPU. So it looks like it's a generic quick start guide. AMD CPU, and here we go. AMD TR4 CPU, it's not really a TR4, it's a TR4X, but, I mean, sorry, a TRX4, uh, but it's pretty much the same, so it shows you on there how to do it, and you can see using the wrench uh, on the actual socket. Okay, let's have a little closer look at the motherboard itself. Here we go. First thing that stands out to me is the TRX4 socket, which stands out like most Threadripper sockets do because of the size. You've got your four DDR4 sockets there, as well as another four on this side, so a total of eight. Again, these will need to be put in a certain way, the memory, um, otherwise it won't generally boot. And you can see where you basically use the wrench on those three points there. Um, basically is to make sure that the CPU is pressed firmly against the pins in the socket. You've also got your four PCI Express 16, uh, one PCI Express one times. So you've got this fan here to help keep that area cool here because I'm guessing it's going to get a lot of heat, with all, if, especially if you're using all those uh, uh, connections. And then you've also got your M.2 sockets there. And as you can see on the bottom, there's plenty of fan connections on there. You've also got a traditional RGB connection. I can see an RGB addressable at the top, or digital RGB, depending on what you call it. And it looks like a Corsair link connection there. That's for you, basically the Corsair RGB uh, hubs, I think they call them the commanders, off the top of my head. 
Uh, you've got all your SATA ports on the side there, so you can see all eight. You can see USB 3 Gen 2 Type-C connector header there if your case supports it. It's also got a little digital readout there which will tell you if there's any boot issues, which is good. And you've got all your other connections and even reset switches at the bottom as well. The heat sinks on here are quite big and heavy. Uh, if you look at this side where the I.O. port is, you can actually see the whole heat sink doubles over there. Uh, you've also got your two lots of 8-pin um, for the power for your CPU as well. On the back of the board you can see where it's marked. Don't put any um, standoffs there because it's going to damage it. So obviously do what it says. Don't go and put it in your case if there's standoffs in those positions. Okay, let's show you how to fit a Threadripper CPU into a motherboard, basically. So, you've got these three screws here which need to be undone with the special wrench what comes with your Threadripper CPU. So you basically stick it in, hold it down, and then turn. And just keep spinning. Now they don't come out, they stay in the socket. So, again, put a little bit of pressure on, there we go, and turn. There you go, so all three have done. So you've done them and you can suddenly see that that CPU socket has just sprung open. So that will now lift, and do those two a bit more, it should lift up, there we go. So you have to make sure all three of those are undone, otherwise it won't open up. You've got this plastic insert here, which to get that out, don't pull at it or anything like that. You've got these two little blue clips here, which you need to basically pull up. It'll be a bit daunting if you're not sure what you're doing. And then you pull that plastic tray out. Okay, because that's just done. That's where your CPU will be going. There's also another plastic tray to protect the pins there. I'm going to actually leave that on until I put the CPU in. Uh, that way, if we drop the CPU, it's not going to damage the pins underneath. Some people will take that out first. Personally, I prefer to get the CPU, and then you've got to slide it. It's like two little runners, what it basically runs on. And it runs it down, and it sort of clips in, and then it's in. So that CPU is then in that socket there. So next you pull up this bit here, so be gentle, and it pulls straight up. That's where you can see the pins. You can see where it's sort of like split into four areas, a bit like four separate CPUs, uh, but you don't want to damage those pins. You damage those pins, you've had it, and that's why they've designed this uh, mechanism to allow you to place it into position correctly. Now you've got that in, this bit just drops down. Well, I'll say drop down, folds down, and you push it into position and push those blue clips in until the clip. So that is then clipped in. Once you've done that, you get the top bit with the three screws in pushed down into place. Now this is where you use this screwdriver. So it tells you on here to close. I didn't see this before, but it says open three, two, one, which was what we did, three, two, one before, and then close one, two, three. So you do this one first, and then you spin your wrench as they call it, and I say it's more like a screwdriver, but and you keep turning. So what you do is basically just keep tightening until it stops, or nearly stops, it sort of clicks when it finishes. So you keep turning, you don't hold the metal bit at the bottom, you hold the plastic, and keep turning, and then you'll suddenly get a sort of a little click, and when you let go, it clicks back. That's how far you go. And the same on number two and three. You don't hold the metal bit at the bottom. You just hold the plastic. And that way it knows exactly how tight it needs to be. And then you'll feel it start to not want to move anymore. And then you'll feel it click. And then unclick when you let go. And the same on the third one. Screw it in. And you'll get like a click. There you go. And let go. That's it, that's it. Now what you need to do is apply your paste, add your cooler, 
obviously stick your memory in and everything else you need to do. I'm going to show you how to fit memory to a Threadripper motherboard. While not all motherboards are the same, but every single one I've come across, you fit the memory the same. It generally has eight sticks of memory it can take. It's quad channel, so that means it works best with four sticks of memory or eight sticks of memory. You can actually use one stick of memory if you wish, and you can even use two, uh, but generally they recommend four because that's quad channel and they'll work better together. But the basics is the memory, if you are having one stick, would go into this socket here, so and then it would boot with one stick. If you're having two sticks of memory in, you would stick it into the socket over here. So notice they are basically the opposite. So you've got the CPU in the middle and then you've got three bays and then the memory there. Now if you are adding on a fourth stick of memory or the third and fourth, uh, you would what you do is basically add the memory into the not the next one over but you miss the blank and the next one over. So it's one blank, one blank then the CPU, then it'll be blank again, and then you'd stick your memory in that one, and then you'd have a blank and one. So basically you load them from the outside, so the first stick goes there, second stick goes there, you miss one, miss one, next stick, next stick, miss one, miss one, CPU. Hopefully that makes it plain and simple for you, um, because a lot of people I've seen try and put all four sticks over here, or they put them in a random order, and then ideally need to go in that order. So in conclusion, this motherboard did everything we asked it to. It even managed to overclock a Threadripper 3960X up to 4.3 GHz, and the only reason it wouldn't go any higher than that wasn't limited because of the motherboard, it was limited to the heat it was actually producing. The motherboard has all the connections, all the features that you'll ever need, or at least for the time being. Uh, you can overclock it easily and change the settings in the BIOS, but you can also do it from their built-in software, which you can download called the Dragon Center. You can change pretty much everything on there, including memory timings. The only thing we did find you couldn't change on there was the actual memory speed, but you could do the timings. As I said, you can overclock the CPU, you can change RGB lighting, and stuff like that. It was just a bit strange you couldn't actually change the speed the memory was running at, but you could actually alter the timing. So in basics, I highly recommend this motherboard. But then again, for the price, you're going to have to recommend it. 400 £450 pounds is a lot of money for a motherboard, but then anything what has that Fred Ripper name on it, especially the third generation, is quite expensive. And believe it or not, it is not the most expensive motherboard out there by far.